Now, the rest of the story. Welcome back to the rest of the story. And that story is... Blast the first cut is on the ground. All right, for those of you that are probably gonna get more opinionated than you really deserve to, um, I'm okay with it. The reason I'm okay with it is because it's gonna be made as dry hay. I mean, I got some weeds through here that I didn't get, but it just goes to my feed versus getting sent down the road. Um, we had that dry spell back in June, got everything behind me made and then some. Or if you guys aren't sure, I'm down at the valley. Uh, the bottom is made and coming up really nice. Uh, this field wasn't sprayed for bugs because I knew I was going to be cutting it in a few days. And still kind of annoying seeing all the grasshoppers out here. They're definitely going after the nice green healthy regrowth versus the stuff that is overripe. Oh well. Um, even the stuff that's overripe, it's called knowing your market and I know that I can get this bale properly, you know, to a certain degree. When I say properly, I mean get a bale dry, um, wrap it about four times in net wrap, probably put a little preservative on it just because it helps me sleep at night. And then get it inside and then just sit on it. It's going to go through a sweat. Hay prices really aren't that bad here lately, but I am hearing and seeing in some of the auction reports that if you guys can't see that beautiful green grass behind me, that's what all of our first cut looks like, or our regrowth looks like after first cut. And that's gonna go until about the first of September. So I'm only doing two cuttings, so I want as much growth on it as possible. I could go out and get for example, two bales to the acre off of it and then get a whole quarter of a bale off of it for a third cutting as opposed to just letting it grow. It's still second cut. It's gonna keep growing for at least a while yet and I'll make it more worth my while just doing one more cutting off of it as opposed to going through and tearing up all of our equipment for for nothing. I mean, it ain't worth it for a quarter of a bale an acre. And I'm on the hills, so this is right side up right now. And if you've seen behind me, I don't know if he's, he's back there somewhere. Dad's down here with the 46 and the coon mower and we're actually making some pretty wicked time down here. So he's got kind of an unfair advantage. He's got a wider cut. Uh, he actually went and did a two acre field before he came down here. So I came down here first because what I like to do is open up basically anything down here. If I got somebody else that's gonna be helping cut, I do it with Ryan, with dad, I know the farm. I know where you should uh, should go and should not go. And opening up the few outside rounds, keeping dad away from the steeper stuff. Like where I'm at right now, I wouldn't want the 46 trying to cut this. Um, he's got the, the wide open, leveler-ish parts of the field. There's about 45, eight, 40 acres plus down here that we're cutting right now. And he's able to just get on the straightaways and let it run. Got a baby deer, which I'm glad he's up and running and not being ran through the disc vine because I really don't need that. Uh, we're actually looking at another dry spell going forward the next week or so. 
Uh, today is Saturday. This video probably won't be up until Tuesday because the chances are by the time I get done talking to you, it's going to make this video long enough that there's no way it's going to be able to get uploaded by tomorrow night. So, hay prices as long as if it's not sweating selling it here locally lately, uh, I don't think prices are too bad. For the most part my problem is selling hay to me is a uh, selling hay during the summer right now when there's an abundance of hay abundance of feed between the pasture because personally i feel like you're competing with people's pasture ground also plus other people that are making it and then just putting wheels under it and sending it um, i'm getting more money for my feed if i can sit on it get it made so it will keep let it sweat out because nobody wants to buy hay that's sweating out and they're not going to they're not going to pay what it's worth versus it being dry or past that point so letting it sit and selling it throughout the winter when there's two three foot of snow on the ground work really well for me is that going to work that way everywhere every year no i've already said this before I had, was it two years back, where I was selling for over a hundred bucks a ton from October, November, December, and then it seems like the calendar's flipped over, which I think prices crashed. I can't remember what happened there. I mean, corn, beans, milk, everything just dropped, and that was reflected in hay prices. So in January, February, March, when typically your best prices should be able to be achieved I was getting 60 to 70 bucks a ton oh well that's the price to play the game uh, farming really is just one big gamble so um, one thing we could really do going forward which I've been thinking about I know people have thought it people have probably said it is getting an inline wrapper I don't have the money to right now probably never will I mean if I keep the same thought process I have been having here lately but um, kind of something I got in my mind is get an inline wrapper I don't really want a single bale wrapper just because when we do feed we usually feed out five ten bales at a time and that's a lot of plastic just for a single bale but back when we were growing up making hay throughout the month of June was never a big deal because it was always getting blown up the silo and you cut it wait a day or two and then you chopped it didn't matter if it was wet it just, you just made it well we don't have that option anymore uh, we do but we don't we don't have any interest in, in chopping anything I'd rather feed all of our hay out through bale feeders highly inefficient but for what our cattle operation currently is and may ever really be, round bale feeders um, to feed our cattle is probably going to be the, the match for us going forward here. I just, I don't get excited about buying chopping equipment, chopper, chopper boxes. Um, the management on the silos, the feeding system. Yes, we could put an inline bag in and do that, but I, I'm more content just putting bales in and letting cows figuring it out. So, uh, if we had an inline wrapper, we could do similar to what we were doing when we were chopping when we had the, uh, the dairy cows is we can go through on dad and ryan say in, partic in particular uh, because they know they'll be needing the majority of theirs for feet then we could inline wrap their hay even if it isn't 100 percent dry and then let it ferment and use it for cow feed that way it gets some of that backlog of, of hay that we need to get made done so when I want to come down and make this, I don't have all of Dad and Ryan's hay to make yet that is on the books because, believe it or not, I'm not 
overly selfish when it comes to getting this stuff made because when I could have came down two weeks ago and had all this made without getting any rain on it, I chose not to and I ended up making that hay of my brothers. Not because I was asked to, not because felt the need to it's just it was the right thing to do so I don't want Ryan's feed going backwards on him he needs all the feed he can get so especially with the hills we got down here um, 76 on the hills with the smaller deer 